When a child of the streets stands before you in rags with a tear-stained face, you cannot easily forget him. And yet, you are perplexed what to do. The human soul is difficult to interfere with. You hesitate how far you should go. Beginning in 1854, Charles Loring Brace founded the Children's Aid Society, which was dedicated to serving the impoverished children of New York City by means of the orphan trains. This resulted in the largest mass migration of children in the United States. Stemming from the shortcomings of the orphan trains came the need for foster care supervision guidelines and child welfare reforms, along with the continued contributions by the Children's Aid Society, including a changed foster care philosophy. As the United States built the Transcontinental Railroad and advertised for free land out west, along with the California Gold Rush, a huge influx of immigrants came from Europe in hopes of fulfilling the American dream. Many settled in New York City, one of the largest ports on the East Coast. The city quickly became overcrowded with many immigrants living in filthy tenement buildings because of their low wages. Children were on the streets stealing food and begging for pennies to help feed their starving families. In 1854 alone, there are 34,000 homeless children on the streets of New York City. Because of this, the New York City Chief of Police sounded an alarm, saying, The constantly increasing number of vagrants, who infest our public thoroughfares, hostels, and docks. Children who are growing up in ignorance and profligacy, only destined to a life of misery, shame, and crime, and ultimately to a felon's doom. At that time, New York did not have the resources or room to host the thousands of orphaned children on the streets. So instead, many of the orphans were placed in orphanages and asylums. Later, a New York State Commission stated, The great mass of poorhouses are most disgraceful memorials of the public charity. Common domestic animals are usually more humanely provided for than the paupers in some of these institutions. Charles Loring Brace, a young, well-educated Methodist preacher, felt that it was his calling to minister to the poor immigrants of New York City. Observing the many suffering children on the streets, he realized that he needed to do something for them. This led him to open lodging houses for newsboys. He also opened industrial schools to teach children the necessary skills needed to find work. However, his crowning achievement was the foundation of the Children's Aid Society. Brace founded the Children's Aid Society in 1853 with eight other men. The foundation of the Children's Aid Society was inspired by concern for the many uncared for immigrant children that roamed the streets. Brace worried that without the society's help, these children would be susceptible to abuse or forced into a life of crime because of their situation. The Children's Aid Society's goal was to help the children help themselves, and they promptly started building and opening facilities for the children. From 1853 to 1929, the Children's Aid Society Immigration Department sent thousands of orphan children all over the United States by train, most often placing them on farms with caring families. Even though this mass migration was called the orphan trains, many children had at least one or both parents living at the time. She came to me. I looked up, I said, I can't go. I'm not an orphan. My mother's still living. She's in the hospital right here in New York. You're going to Texas. 
The children were usually sent on the trains in groups of 10 to 40, being supervised by at least one or two Western placement agents. These agents held a big role in the success of the orphan trains. They were responsible for creating their groups of children and taking care of these children until they were successfully adopted. Another task that the agents needed to fulfill was forming a committee in each town that the children visited. The committee included town doctors, bankers, or other prominent members of society. These society members were then responsible for approving future parents for the children the day the train arrived. Another orphan train rider later compared the process of pairing a child to their prospective parent like picking out puppies at a dog pound. Over the 75 years that the orphan trains were implemented, about 250,000 orphan children were placed throughout 47 states in Canada. I would have never stood a chance if they had left me in that environment. I would have never gotten to do anything I was capable of. But them picking me up and moving me clear away from it, as bad as it was afterwards, I got a chance to do what I was capable of doing, making something myself, uh, being a good mother. Even though the orphan trains are referred to as the beginning of the foster care system in America, it is important to note that there was outrage due to the immigration program's shortcomings in placement, supervision, and overall health of the children. You can do that now. But people were different then. The whole the world was different. They acted different, lived different. And they, they couldn't do a thing like that now. Because criticism of the orphan trains came during a time of history where reform movements were taking shape, it was natural to use the shortcomings of the immigration program to help champion child welfare reforms. For instance, in 1905, the National Child Labor Committee was created. They lobbied for a federal children's bureau, which was supported by President Teddy Roosevelt. It failed to make it to the floor to get a vote, but later returned and was passed in 1911. Another impact felt by the deficits of the orphan trains was the obvious need for supervision in adoption and foster care. As a result, in 1917, Minnesota passed the first law that required home and social inspections on people hoping to adopt. The federal government began providing grants for state institutions in 1935 as part of the Social Security Act. It was enabled for the protection and care of the homeless, dependent, and neglected children and children in danger of becoming delinquent. Thirty years later, the act was improved, including child protection and foster care. 160 years later, the Children's Aid Society that Charles Loring Brace founded is still serving the children of New York City. Their mission is to help children in poverty succeed and thrive. But unlike the orphan trains, they have a new philosophy. Instead of searching for foster families out of state, they look within a foster child's own community to recruit prospective parents. The reason being, it is much easier for children to adapt if they are in familiar settings. By founding the Children's Aid Society, Charles Loring Brace enabled over 200,000 children to be delivered to new homes around the United States, resulting in the largest mass migration of children in the United States. Even though this movement was not a complete success, many child welfare reforms and adoption laws came to be, along with the Children's Aid Society, which is still serving today.